music sound in the back, so just show us that clip. Yo, I go by the name of Walter Patton, aka Freak Nicky Walt, and I'm here with uh, Bring Money. Yeah, and then we're gonna do an interview, man, on um, her music career and what she's been doing the last year or two. Let me see that. All right, so okay. whenever y'all ready. Yo, I go by the name of Walter Patton, man, aka Freak Nicky Walt, and I'm here with yeah, Bring Money. And this is an episode of Ghetto Therapy, man. And I'm here. We're one of my favorite artists, man, not just in the city, but in the world, man, because I know her struggle. Like, I grew up around her, and I seen her, you know what I'm saying? So, just kind of give them a background of where you're from. Okay, yeah, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, Donaway Projects, um, Case Court. That's where I was born and raised. So, yeah, that's a little bit. How long you been down in this area? Okay, I've been, so I'm 24, about a couple years, so like 20, about 20 years. 20 years? 20 years. 20, that's a long 20, time. 20, uh, that's a long it's been time. A minute. It's a long time. So what motivated you to start making music? Um, when I was young, my aunties and all them used to have me sitting around at family events singing and, you know, parading around with the family. We used to just have family time and then I just like, one day just like was playing with my family on the beat and I actually liked it. Like, this is what I was doing. I couldn't believe myself. I'm like, okay. So then I tried to make my first track. It worked. It was better, you know what I'm saying, time, better time, but it worked. Okay, so so who was your favorite artist? Like like who inspired you to start doing the music though? Uh Dave Low. I was messing with Dave's Low music. I was listening to her. She gave me like a more of an outlook of who I was. You know what I'm saying? She was like in the land I'm in. And her voice and her music just inspired me. And I was like, if she could, I could. So I had went on ahead and I did it. And I'm, and I'm still getting better as time goes. So. Absolutely. So um Growing up in the Donaway Projects, man, like what was like one of your worst experiences? And then after that, on the flip side, like what was like one of your best experiences? Uh, one of my worst experiences in the projects was going through the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like having to figure out what me, my mom, my brother was gonna do when it got hard, when it was hard to just survive. Period. Just was a situation that I feel like I couldn't get out of, but I made it. You know what I'm saying? So I. I feel like I get stronger every day on the situation. I think about it. I look at other people's situations, you know what I'm saying, and say it ain't as worse as it could be. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And the best, you said the best, right? Yeah, like, what was that? What was your feeling? Uh, it made me strong. It made me, it made me tough. It made me know that it ain't over. You know what I'm saying? The project is a stepping stone. It's supposed to be from here and go better. So, I guess that's it for real. So at what point though, like what point in your life you was just like, fuck it, I'm just like, this is what I'm about to do, I'm doing music. Like at what point did you start to take music serious? About a year and a half ago, I was like, uh, this it, you know, like so music like kinda make me tell a story. I mean, I might not give it all the way where everybody can understand, but you know what I'm saying, who can relate to me can understand, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I guess I don't know, that's it, I don't know. Get a little turn up too, cause I do be nervous still with my videos, cause I just started, so I kind of be nervous for that too. So. Man, just a year ago, I, I look, I ain't drunk liquor in about 15 months, but I used to drink every day. Nobody knew. I just drink at nighttime right before I go to bed. I had this stressful ass job to drink before I go in this bitch. So yeah, for sure, I just come out of that. But it was because of what I'm doing with the youth program, filming. It was a part of my purpose. I could be. Changing for who you wanna be. Yeah, yeah listen, I, I do not support drugs. I don't support drugs and yeah. people doing drugs and none, none of those. Yeah, it's for you, but sure. Yeah, like I am who I am. Like I ain't gonna change it for nothing. But I come from that. Like, yeah. 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 So let's get it in. Um. So you're gonna go right back in. Um, so yeah. So I know coming up, you know, I was doing music for a while. I still do every now and then, right? But my thing was support, right? So it was like. It's rare to find somebody who you come up with that really supports you. And like, what I'm trying to say is with you right here, like I don't know your name, right? So I'm pretty sure you'll introduce yourself, but like what makes you sit on the side of Bree and like just support her like that? Like, like what do you see in Bree that make you want to support her? I mean, growing up and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? 
we ain't really have a lot, you feel me? So like, it's, it's the hope of, of what you can do, you know what I'm saying? Turning something that really was nothing into something, so, you know, like, that's, that's the, that's the system right there. You gotta stay solid, you feel me? Like, that's your partner, that's your partner. Yeah. You can't change on your, your people, yeah. you feel me? It would make a difference, nigga, if it was a million dollars to where it was ten. Nigga, we do it there when it was ten, so, you feel me? That's all it is, it's just, you feel me? By the way, my name is Extra, you know what I'm saying? I, I, uh, I got a few projects coming up, you feel me? It's it's a series coming up. It's a lot of stuff we working on right now, so yeah. yeah. Mm. It's going to be called Trap Decisions. If y'all want to know, y'all can check it out on YouTube in a couple months. It's going to be on my page. Y'all can follow me under underscore Bree Money, B-R-I, Money, no spaces, underscore, underscore. It's definitely going to be a nice little project we got coming out. It's called Trap Decisions. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be basically when our life, the streets, music. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of stuff. Families, it's gonna be a lot. You are gonna see them. Y'all right. gonna see it actually. It's gonna be a nice little project we got coming up. We can have you in it for sure. You know what I'm saying? Motivating us to be a better person. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Y'all gonna see though. It's gonna be a nice little film. So y'all just check us out on the ground. He uh extra. We gonna uh have to put some letters in there. He got a couple extra letters. I don't wanna see all the letters right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely gonna be a nice little project though. Okay. Sure. That's what's up, extra man. You know, like that's that's important, man. Like. You may not, like, you don't need a lot of support, you feel me? You just need that yeah. one person that's going to ride with you, and I can respect yeah, you he, he riding ride with Bree, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I see it, and I can respect it. So, that leads into my next question. Like, how do you feel about support? Like, far as, like, whether your community, your friends, or just the city, do you feel like you receive the right amount of support? I'm going to say my most support comes from the boys from down here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They kind of support me because they can relate. I have more... Music about them because you know what I'm saying. They're my brothers, we grew up different. We differently. We come from uh nothing. Like I said, like he said, we come from nothing. So we're trying to make it to something. And uh, we kind of been going through a, a lot of death in the city of Cleveland. So we kind of trying to not really talk about a lot of drama, dead bodies. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to come different. And a lot of people ain't gonna support me because I'm not coming how they want me to come. But they gonna understand why I came, how I came, when I came. So it's it's, it's definitely like a no support from a lot of the other artists because they feel like I feel like they feel like it's not gonna ever be good here but we gotta come together as one to be somebody you know what I'm saying so even in, in the times where I feel like I'm not supported I still keep going and this he is my biggest supporter he next to me every day for real like crazy every day he with me he tell me like cuz get up this you know what I'm saying I kind of get unmotivated sometimes because I how I think of what's going on, like, or a lot of the gang violence been happening around, so I kind of be like, if you know, who to trust, who to, you know what I'm saying, who to be around, but I can't let that interact with who I want to be in life and what I want to do with my music. So, even if no support, I'm my support, this my support, you my support, he my support, you know what I'm saying, we're going to come from nothing. We're going to make it to be somebody, whether they look at us now or they look at us 10 years from now, we got this. That's how I look at it for real. I'm the support man, though. So what's your take on support? So what's your take like? What's your definition of support? Okay, listen. I feel like if you doing something and you being honest and all the way out there, somebody watching that. Somebody you know, watching. That's like this right now. We in this bitch and we recording and somebody watching this motherfucker. It's probably a hundred motherfuckers watching this motherfucker right now. So I just feel like if you get it out there, people gonna watch. You feel me? Man, they gonna like this. You, you gotta be your they biggest gonna supporter. Like this. You, you know gotta be your biggest supporter. You gotta basically. be. The person who's doing it gotta be. You know what I'm saying? If you don't feel like you showing enough for support for yourself, then how they gonna support you? Mm -hmm. You gotta be your biggest supporter. So you gotta let them know that this is what you wanna do. Even if 10 other people don't say this is what she good at, I know I'm good at it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you your own critic. You your own critic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You judge yourself enough, you might feel how you feel. You say you got it, you got it. It was times I woke up like, no, oh, music ain't, and I'm like, no, music is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It made me tell, it made me let know that let, let people know that anger can be punk spoken through music. You know what I'm saying? You, wanna, you ain't got to be in the streets, kill a person about it. It ain't even that serious. You actually can, like, take your time, slow down and think, write it out, and it can become something. You know what I'm saying? Even if you make a book, a movie, a, a series, anything, music, shoot, a rap, whatever, sing it, rap it. Harmonize it, hum it, it's, it can be heard. You just gotta know how to do it. 
and you ain't even gotta have a lot of support. You can support yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, man. Like that's like that's what I look to hear from artists, man. Like coming up, like support is really a self thing. Like music is an earned support. Like this is an earned support game. Like you don't come in getting support. You feel me? If you do, then you blessed. But you gotta come in. You gotta earn your position. You know what I'm saying? And I really believe that you've been earning your position. And I think it's kind of solidified now. And um, I'm liking the consistency. I love and I not, not stopping it. it. You know what I'm saying? So consistency it. is a big thing of support for yourself as well. Because staying consistent, that's gonna make other people. That's gonna attract other people to you by staying consistent. Yeah, you know what I'm right. saying? That's why I said even if now they don't hear me, they don't hear me. Even if it's ten years from now. You know what I'm saying? I'm 24. So like I said, I just started a year ago. I just started probably when I was 23, and it's it's still going. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be more progression than it's gonna be denying who I am. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good situation with the music. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a good situation for sure. Gotcha. All right. So um, growing up, growing up down the way, right? Growing up in the projects, like what was some of the um? I mean, let me let me think. How can I put this? What were some of the things that affected you the most? Like just seeing it with your own eyes, being down the way. What were some of the things that affected? Uh, Kind of like a lot of fighting. It was like, but that was better than killing because we knew that when we fight, you know what I'm saying, or when our family fight or our friends fight, we knew that it was going to be a tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You could wake up and talk about the fight. We can't talk about death right now mm -hmm. because the person who was in the situation can't get up, talk to us. We just lost somebody who was like probably the most funniest, you know what I'm saying, the most caring, most loving, support. I don't care what you do. If you outside all night trying to make a dollar, and he was there. Which was my brother Junkie, you feel me? And that affected a lot of the boys, a lot of the females, a lot of his sisters, brothers. It affected a lot of us. But his brother, Kesey, man, he trying to show who he really wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? I know it take a, a lot of pain, struggle, a lot of hard shit to happen. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, like they say, God use you for the struggle. And it, sometimes it take you to be here. You hit me. Uh, I said, I'm sorry. Uh, how you say it? What's that word? Humiliated. Humiliated Good. to be who you is because it showed that even in the hard times you could be strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You could come out of that walking. So like I say, I'd rather be back in the day where it was bang outs than it's a lot of shoe it because a lot of people scared to fight because they scared to lose. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can't be scared to lose because it'd be a win sometimes behind that lose. Mm -hmm. So you just got to keep going and never give up, strive, go hard. That's what I've been learning since I was young, now, then, there, here, wherever. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that kind of like was a bad thing in the hood, like a lot of fire. But then now I'm thinking like I'd rather fight than shoot, you know what I'm saying? Shoot. Because it, it's no tomorrow. You can't talk to that person no more. You know what I'm saying? It, it make you miss who this person was or it make you miss them. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was bad out here. But a lot of people made, a lot of people still stuck in their ways. You know what I'm saying? Stuck into the projects because like I said it's just a stepping stone but some people don't never move don't never leave it even if they move they here you know what I'm saying so it kind of like affect a lot of people kids a lot of people moms dads grandparents cousins friends best friends relationships a lot of people leaving because of nonsense with the community and if we just come together as one we're from the same situation whether it's up the way down the way we're from here though we're from here why were we all like fight, diss each other, do all this, when it could be better, we could just stick together. Mm. But a lot of people ain't like glue. You know what I'm saying? Someone I'm glue for, you gotta just like stand strong. I don't know. Mm. So when you said, so when you mentioned Junkyard, so I'm, so for the, so for the people who don't know, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. who don't know Junkyard, right? Mm -hmm. Or may not know you, like, so junk. I'm assuming that Junkyard, he died the gun violence, right? Dunk, yeah. Right. So what's, so what's your take on the, you know, like on the gun violence in the city of Cleveland? I and what was your like, relationship with Junkyard after you answered the, um, your um, take on gun violence? My brother Junkyard. So we lived in the house together for a few years. We had like the most funnest times. Like I could smile about it because like I don't want to cry about it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So he was like my blood brother, but he wasn't blood. It was just like the loyalty and who he was as a person. You know what I'm saying? Even when it's bad, he can make you laugh. Even when the situation feel like it ain't going nowhere, he going, you know what I'm saying? Like try his best to make you uh, happy, smile, joke, you know what I'm saying, like, so, he was kind of like, I'm going to say he was the heart of the projects, you know what I'm saying, he gave us a different outlook, you know, now that he gone, it felt like, I don't know who 
was really with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's weird. Like, we grew up with a lot of people that it's a lot of violence with right now. Like, we trying to figure out how did this even go to even lose the heart of the projects. What it take to lose to win. Yeah. It's crazy, ain't it? Yeah. So, yeah, Jackie was my favorite brother. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He won my blood. Like I say, my brother is, you know what I'm saying, 40, but yeah. 40 of him was like this. You know what I'm saying? They never left each other's side. Even when it was bad, out here a snow blizzard, it wasn't nothing. We walking to meet. We walking to do this, to eat. We good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, back in the day, it wasn't um, more posting at the gas station. It was more posting at Save a Lot. Everybody need them quarters, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> put in there, yeah. and you got to, that's your hustle, you know what I'm saying, and I learned that from my brothers, like, you know what I'm saying, so, they made me who I am, and it's kind of, like, hard when I only got one now, because that was my other brother, so he, like, was, like, a big, big part of the project, he showed a lot before he left, you know what I'm saying, the little 25 years, 26 years he had in his life, and that kind of affected the boys, because they don't know who to trust, who to think, who is who. And you know what I'm saying? They was good to him. You know what I'm saying? Even in his bad times. Mm -hmm. And in they bad times, even if it was 50 cents, we gonna make it work. Because back in the day, Chip wasn't even 50 cents to a yeah. dollar. They was 25 cents. So that that 50 cent made it okay. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like kind of hard. I feel like the world changing. Mm -hmm. Since he's been gone, it's been a little hard for us. So. Mm -hmm. Just wish he was here, but it don't work like that. That's why I said I wish it was kind of more like bang out the shoot. Yeah. I'm saying? So I could talk to my brother and we could talk about the fight. We ain't... The fight ain't really the fight no more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So when you say the fight ain't really the fight no more, it's really about guns, right? Yeah. So what's your take on gun violence in, in the city and just, you know, what you're seeing with your own eyes? I feel like when it's need to be, it's need to be. When it's not, it's not. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get hit by accident. It don't be on purpose. So it's like, I feel like that was more of an accident shooting than more of a purposely shooting. But it's not taken as that. It's taken as... It's purpose, but it wasn't really a purposely situation to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like my brother was supposed to be gone, so the violence in the city with guns is, I feel like a lot of men pick guns up because they feel like it make them tougher, but it really don't. It make you weaker mm -hmm. because it, it wasn't never guns. It was always fighting. Mm -hmm. So it's like a kind of hard situation with this gun situation. I don't know how to take it because, like, I don't like guns. A reason why I don't like guns is because I went through something like that was very dramatic, traumatic, and I'm still kind of like trying to get over the situation, but it ain't get over. It's I'm trying to like, you know what I'm saying, talk to my other brother that I witnessed some stuff with. Like I'm trying to make sure he don't see the weak in me, you know what I'm saying? Because before he left, I was always strong. He knew he could come talk to me, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's kind of like hard to stay strong with all this gun violence anchor, because we don't know who next. Yeah, you know for what sure. I'm saying? So last year, last year in 2019, we ended out with 118 murders. That was last year in 2019. Mm -hmm. In 2020, we already at 126. So we already, we about to double that number, but we still got about two months left in this year. Mm -hmm. What do you think, why do you think the murder rate has increased in the city of Cleveland, from your perspective? Why do you think? I feel like more people trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. I feel like people trying to prove more points and trying to let them know that, oh, this state street, this state city, but like, really it's like, we all from this city, so like you can't claim a street that fifteen thousand other people lived down before. And these houses that y'all claiming that y'all, you know what I'm saying, it really don't go like that no more. You know what I'm saying? This ain't nineteen eighty, this ain't nineteen sixties, this ain't that. We come from the same thing, we gotta stand as one and make us make each other strong and people really not getting that right now. They trying to come towards oh, I gotta prove a point. This mine's this mine, it's not yours. You know what I'm saying? We all come from the same projects. A lot of us from down here has killed each other down here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, damn, who who really with us? You know what I'm saying? So everybody just don't know who to trust. So it's like more, you a op, shoot. You a op, shoot. It really ain't supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be, what's going on, bro? But everybody not, you know what I'm saying, on that level right now. They thinking high-headed instead of smart. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like. So, all right, so that's so, yeah, man, that's that's real too. For sure. That's, that's, that's very real. A lot of points trying to be proven, for sure. A lot of points to, got to, trying to be proven. So, okay, so I always say this. I always say this. I want to get your perspective on this because you, you kind of hit at it. And um, growing up, I only knew one person, right, that, that was murdered by the cops. His name was Henry Bailey from Garden Valley, right? Mm -hmm. But I know a thousand people in the city that was murdered, gun violence, by somebody that looked like them. So it's like, to me, my fight isn't the police brutality fight. 
my fight is us killing us. What like what do you think about us killing us versus police brutality, and what do you think is more important to target? Do you think police brutality is more important to target in the city of Cleveland or us killing us? Us killing us, because it's more us killing us than police killing us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I lost somebody to uh, police violence before because uh, a situation would have run in at the store, but I feel like the situation could have been handled better. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And a lot of people try to judge the book off his cover, but you don't know. Somebody can look as good as, sharp as casket, you know what I'm saying? And be going through hard times, taking beatings by family, relationships, kids, it's a, it's a lot. So like, this police brutality situation is like way, it's not as worse as the one-on-one -on -one with the blacks killing blacks or us killing us. It's more like everybody want to kill because they feel like, again, a point to prove, but it's really not a point to prove. You get nervous. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't get, get scared in the jam, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it get hard. Sometimes you really can talk it out, but sometimes you can't. Everybody thinking different right now. And that's why I was to get back to why are like why everybody thinking different because they wanna they wanna kill to let it be known that this is theirs and the person gone. But that really like hurt. Like I said, moms, kids, family members, friends, this shit is getting harder out here for us to even be who we is because now we everybody wanna show show who they used to be or who they wanted to be. As a thugs, it ain't even really gotta be like that. We trying to be better, we trying to make it out the hood. I don't want to live down and clean up for all my life. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with what's going on. I want to take adventures. But how if we losing people back to back? We got funerals to cover, costs. It's a lot right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't even be rich and be feeling rich because you got to bury your friends, your family members, your loved ones, your relationship. You know what I'm saying? You got to bury that now. It's leaving so fast that we here right now. The next second we gone. You know what I'm saying? So, and time moving fast. Like, the world is going Week after week, day after day, every day I wake up, click the members page, got this person on there, this person on there, this person. Like, you like, damn, what's wrong? What's going on? I feel like something is just coming over the whole world. Yeah. Like, it's a bad, like, kid, like just killing in the air. Like, they just spray kill, and it just kill, 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 kill. I feel like we need to just all stick together and just come together as one. Well. One time, like, and I had everybody, I was the thugs, the gangsters, the this, the that. We got to come together as one and to make it better. Or it's not gonna get better. I agree. You I agree. Saying? Unity for sure. Unity. For sure. Um, Collaborations for sure. Collaborations for sure. I know um, in the city of Cleveland, us also. I wanna, as you being a, um, a young lady, as you being a woman, there was a um, a murder, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know this lady name. I don't wanna mess her name up. But she was murdered on Lakeshore by, by some young guys who was trying to rob her and they shot her to the car. Y'all familiar with that story? I think I just young seen it. Short haircut. Short model. Yeah. Yeah. And then. And then on the 123rd in St. Clair, that video went viral. It was on the Cleveland River page when the guy had stumped the girl on. Did y'all see that? In the yeah, store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start with you, cause you cause you a man, right? So how do you feel about black men committing violent acts against black women? Like, what's your take on that? Like with the incident on Lakeshore with the young lady being shot and the incident in the gas station. I mean, I'm gonna be all the way out. Females, man, sometimes they get a little bit too wild and stuff like that, but as a man, you ain't supposed to see no no woman as no threat, period. You know what I'm saying? That's a woman, you're a man. You're not supposed to see that woman as no threat, you feel me? I don't think you I definitely don't. I ain't feeling no woman getting shot. You're not supposed to shoot no woman, you know what I'm saying? At all. Like, you know. But women do kind of take their roles. And they kind of try to run with it because of who they are. Mm -hmm. But a man, as being a man and a grown man at that, you have to just like look past that and walk away. Some men feel like they pride be so big, they can't walk away. But like on that situation, we don't know, you don't know, I don't know, we wasn't there to see the situation. Uh -huh. But for it to be on the camera, they probably didn't even show what really went down. They showed more of him. I don't know him, I don't know her, which I wish the best for, you know what I'm saying? But he, as a man, should have came different in approaching the situation. He could have walked away and made it look good instead of making it what the media wanted. Show a black man beating a black woman, and that's it. But other than that, we don't know what happened in there, so we really don't give too many outlooks on it. But it's a kind of a hard situation because as a woman, we more weaker 
than a man. We weak to compare to y'all. So I feel like y'all know that, not yo, you or him, but men know that, and they know like the advantages that they can have over women. And they gotta stop doing that because it make y'all look bad. You know what I'm saying? As a man, you're not supposed to even hit a woman. But they made it this like it's okay. Domestic violence is a big project situation too. It could become so bad to where somebody fighting enough for a woman, so now she gotta get a gun. She's so scared for her life and shoot a man, or the man be feeling like he gotta do it. He kill her. He didn't even mean to kill her. He right. killed her. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's different when you grow up seeing more like domestic violence in the projects, because that's a lot. Uh, that was a lot of things that was going on there too. A lot of domestic violence. A lot of young men and grown men hitting women. And women hit men. But see, men feel like they know, all right, don't hit me no more. And then the girl hit them again. And they kind of like push them to hit the girl. But now they comfortable with hitting the girl. So they just keep beating on her. Because she allowed it the first time. But they allowed it 15, 30,000 times. You know what I'm saying? Over exaggeration number. But they allowed it so many times that they feel like, oh, I can just hit him and he just going to. Sometimes a man do get fed up, but in certain situations, it be like, unknowingly, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. So bring it back to don't judge a book by its cover, because this person could be happy in the streets, or happy at work, happy in school, and be miserable when you go home. So, work, home, the streets, you know what I'm saying, could be one of their worst places, but they need that comfort, and sometimes a female don't give it to them, they just give them sex, or... You know what I'm saying? Hey, that, that shit don't really like solve nothing no more. You, somebody needs somebody to talk to, you really gotta talk to them. You know what I'm saying? When people get a relationship, they don't even get a relationship no more to com communicate, conversate, what's really going on. They more in tune in, oh, what's this? Or what's that? Money. Or what you got a car, you got a house? Oh, I can get something about you. Mm -hmm. That's kind of not like, women ain't supposed to be like that either. You know what I'm saying? The men been doing it lately. It's been a lot of men using women. So like that kind of like, a, it's a control situation. It's a lot of controlling going on in the situation of domestic violence. Somebody want to control this person, this person want to control that. So it comes from both ends to a man might flip or a woman might flip. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a snap. You will get fed up. You want to, you love the person so much that you will stay, but it's not even worth it. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of a situation going on with the man hitting woman or the woman hitting man. And then a lot of people just be like, it's okay, families want to outlook it all. Oh, this one she want to go back to. But you got to understand why she want to go back. Because she is used to it. She loves this man. He know how to sweet talk her. You know what I'm saying? And you got to tell her, as growing up, a lot of mamas don't want to tell you that's what's going on because they want to hide you from the truth. But you got to tell your kids or your teenage girls growing up. Because 13, 14 year olds fight men, fighting their dudes. Like, this ain't really what's normal. But they done seen it in the household before. The daddy and the mama catch a smoke, you know what I'm saying? So they like, oh, this is normal. They stay together 15 years. It's generational. And so it's a generational curse. Yes, we are. Alright, so what's some of the artists that you work with in the city of Cleveland? Uh, I got a few local artists right now. I'm doing uh, projects with Jets Two Times, Marlo, Rift Flames. Uh, extra. I got some with Tattoo John. I got some with my homie Yanni. Got a few upcoming, but we haven't started the project yet, so we just gotta kind of work into that. Uh, I got some coming up with you. Okay. And like, I got a few more artists that want to work with me, but we haven't. We're gonna throw names out there right now until it happens. But a few more artists I want to work with in the industry. <laughs> I want to kind of work with Days Loaf. Okay. Uh, run into Money Bag. I like his his rhythm. I like how he flow. And Lil Baby right now and Polo G because he comes from a different street street rap. So yeah, I kind of want to work with them. But uh, local wise, yeah, I said Red Flames, Extra, Jets, Two Times, Lil Marlo, Tattoo John, Yan, yeah, and you. Mm -hmm. So that's right now. But anybody else want to work with me? We definitely can get some uh. Features popping. Okay. We can get something going. I definitely like working with the city of Cleveland because we got some hot, but everybody just ain't giving it all. You know what I'm saying? So okay. So what does it take? So what does it take to work with you? Like like like, do you um, is it a certain criteria that you pick to work with artists? Like, do they have to be on a certain level to work with you? Do Not you even. You just gotta be on what I'm on. You know what I'm saying? So basically, like consistency. You gotta be serious. You gotta have a. Not even gotta have. Just like. If you want to, if you feel like you're not good, just come to me and we can get better. You know what I'm saying? So, I help people with 
Seth, Seth, uh, I'm sorry, Stephanie's melodies. I help people with a uh, like flowing. Mm -hmm. If you can't get it, let's work it another way. If you can't say it straight out, sing it. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's kind of fun with the working with other artists because I get different perspectives, different energies. So I might have a singing person, and we might make a song singing. I got a rapper, I call rapper, but I can come singing too. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's, it's kind of fun with the little local. Cleveland got a lot of hard artists that we haven't brought out yet because people is not as uh, serious because they think they're going to be judged. But like I said, don't judge. You never know what this person where you come from. So let them tell their story and how they're going to wreck it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah. So, when you make music, like, so when you're making music, bring money, when bring money, making music, mm -hmm. what do you want the supporters, the fans to get from your music? Uh, more like a relation. Like, can you relate to it? Or if you don't relate to it, do you know somebody who do relate to it? Or if not even that, I feel like they can get more, uh, I feel like they get more, I get more love to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Let them know what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got to get more of what I've been through in a different way of saying because I don't think people go really understand it. But as long as some understand it, they, go, they can follow and make another understand. So you might listen to the first track. Might not even like it, but listen to my next track and might fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. and the next track you might not like, but the next one. So just listen, you know what I'm saying? You never know what I'm saying that you can relate to, or you might know somebody going through it, or you went through it. Sometimes people ain't going through it, but they went through it before, and they can just like kind of uplift you. Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, well, maybe it ain't hard. You know what I'm saying? As a man or a woman, because I make music for both. Mm -hmm. I make music for kids. Not saying kids, but I, yeah. kids five, six, who understand, oh, mommy and daddy going through it, or my brother in the street, just knowing, you know what I'm saying, it make, it make you want to hear what I got to say, you know what I'm saying, so I, I get a lot of, like, a lot of love from children too, because they like how I rap, they like how I be on the beat, you know what I'm saying, kids can relate as well, so I make music for everybody, it ain't just one person, I don't just make music for hood people, or thugged out people, I make music for people who really like, need to sit down and talk to themselves sometimes, because it is hard or you know what I'm saying everybody don't got a parent, everybody don't got a mom, dad, so kind of like that. I had both. I lost my dad when I was 13. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of on that level. Mm -hmm. sure. We still rolling? Mm -hmm. Alright. So um when I listen to your music, I hear I hear a lot of melodies. You know what I'm saying? That's what catches me, like the melody, your voice, and then just knowing your struggle and knowing where you come from. It's it's dope, you know what I'm saying? So I, I love your music, but um what is, who is, who is Brie Money? Like, who are you? Like, as a person, like, if no one, if, okay, say in the public, right? So mm -hmm. the public know who you are, right? So right. what is something that they don't know about you? Um, I kind of don't know what they don't know, but what I try to let people know is that I'm good people. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm actually caring and loving. You know what I'm saying? I got a sensitive side out the world. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm more like a help to others, not even financially, just mentally, mm -hmm. physically. I can be there, you know what I'm saying? So, what somebody don't know is I'm, I'm good people, but I think they all can see it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think they all know, like, oh, Bree, she been there for me before mm -hmm. when it was hard for me. Oh, Bree, she let me come in, you know what I'm saying, when I was out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I kind of give people a stepping stone and you got this, you know what I'm saying? Even if I need to be there with you while you trying to get it, mm -hmm. we going to get it together, you know what I'm saying? I ain't asking for no handouts. I asked for anybody to come back, look for me, and say here. You know what I'm saying? Because I did it out the kindness of my heart and out of love. And out of what I've been through and what I wish I had when I was growing up, as somebody to come talk to me and tell me it's okay. My mom, my brother, but like I say, I was looking for other. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you can't look for other. Look for what's in your face. It's right there. So the reason I ask that question is because some people think they can listen to your music and think they know you. You know what I'm saying? And they come up with their own perception of who you are due to your music. So I just wanted to, I mean, I wanted you to kind of express, well, I think you did a good job at it, but just, like, let them know what they don't know about you. You get what I'm saying? Like, what is it something that they don't know about you that okay. they, they may know about you through music? They, what they don't know is it ain't easy. Yeah. What they don't know, it, it was hard. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of make it look easy because I don't want to wear what I go through. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's a kind of situation where they are gonna judge a book by its cover. Oh, she good. She got the money. She showing it off. But really, like money don't make me happy. You know what I'm saying? And what make me happy is music. So when I do feel like I make a music video, I feel like this is a, I'm on a red carpet and this is my spotlight. And I'm I got this whether I feel like I don't got it. I got this. You feel me? So like people always judge me as in oh she okay she good. You know what I'm saying? But I go through stuff every day in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't easy paying bills by myself, you know what I'm saying? Trying to be an adult. It ain't easy being who I am, you know what I'm saying? And everybody want me to put this image up because I say bring money, so they look at it for the next thing you have to bring. They look for the money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, they, the first thing they think is, oh, bring money, bring money. Like, it's really not what you think. It's what I'm speaking into. I'm trying to speak into existence. Bring money, you know what I'm saying? I want to be bring money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple dollars, but it don't make me or change me. I ain't trying to say when I'm rich, I'm going to change. But what I'm trying to say is that, uh, what I'm trying to say is that, I know, when I came up in a music situation, I felt like music opened me up to be a different person. Turn down. Turn down. When I feel like music opened me up to be a different person. And when music opened that door, I just was like, more of expressing it to others. I expressed it, expressed it through my music when I put it on the beat. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm changing. Being who I am and showing people different sides of me because I could be better, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's cut this real quick. Man, so, do you feel music, rap, play a part of the violence in the community? Yes, due to other people's words. A lot of, uh, I feel like a lot of rappers, <coughs> excuse me, I feel like a lot of rappers is giving more of a, a street image to take over the people's lives because people want to go off of these rappers. They want to say, oh, it's okay to do this. It's okay to shoot because a lot of songs come off negative, but everybody like them because of the beat or the hyperness or the words they say. Like I say, a lot of people relate to a lot of songs, even if it ain't my song. It might be Lil Baby song, Moneybag song, or a lot of upcoming artists that's coming out. You know what I'm saying? Shiesty, Gucci, you know what I'm saying? Them people, they might look up to that because they talking about what they want to talk about, what the other people want to hear. So it's kind of like making people say, so it's okay to shoot. Run a nigga down the block on the slide, and now they cool to slide down the block and just shoot the whole, whether it's innocent by standard that's or outside they, or not. That's sometimes what make the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if that's what make, if somebody saying, hey, bro, I give you this much money to make that, you wouldn't be like, like, shit, you know what I'm saying? The money right there in your right, face. Right, so a lot of people is giving negative energy in their songs because that's what's going on in the communities. You know what I'm saying? So that's what people really like, feel like they're relating to it when they ain't even nothing same to relate to. You really got your little sisters, brothers, family members. It's really, they really hungry out here. And you feel like it's okay to talk about that and to lose you when they need you. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's affecting the community. It's making it harder for people to even grow up because that's, they feel like that's okay. You know what I'm saying? When it's really not though. So, we at the end of 2020. We about to be at the top of 21. 2021 real soon. Um, what is it something that we can expect from Bree Money in, in the next year or so? Better music. Better. Uh, a better me. Mm -hmm. A better uh, better photographers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say a more motivated me. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm already motivated, but I feel like I got to go harder. You know what I'm saying? So a better Better songs, you know what I'm saying? Better beats, better a lot, a lot better. That's all I can say. I'm gonna give them better, and I'm gonna give them more who I am than who I was. You know what I'm saying? More who I am and who I and then who I was, and show them that it ain't all about what you know. It's who you know and how you know it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm gonna come up from. What I'm about to come up with my next projects. Like I said, I might want to do the. Series and make it called Trap Decisions, but I'm still working on the name. But we got more scenes in it, you know what I'm saying? Right now, we an extra, we working on that, so that's gonna be a little cool little situation we got going. And then I got my music that I'm trying to come out with. I'm gonna be giving more melody instead of like hardcore rap, I'm gonna be giving more singing and uh, less cussing, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that's a problem with cussing, but just saying I'm gonna give them less cussing so they know what I'm really saying, they're hearing what we grew up hearing. You know what I'm saying? So, they're going to understand me. It's going to be this type of music they like. I'm just going to be giving it to them in a different way. You know what I'm saying? Okay. One Go. question for you. Go ahead. I'm with it. So, uh, how you feel about the violence and the gun violence that's been happening? And how do it affect your music? And 
how do it? What do it make you want to do? Well, I think the violence in the um in our community is structure. And what I mean by structure is just like it's a it's a government force. Like it's it's planned for us to go this route, right? So if you if you take away employment, if you take away because we the only community down way in Cooking Ohio got a grocery store. So if you take away our way to eat, we become hungry. Hunger turns into violence. So I believe that all this is is a big structure. But the thing is, once you become knowledgeable of the government structure and you still choose to be violent, that's when it's your fault. But in the beginning, this shit ain't our fault. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know exactly what they're doing to us. You know what I'm saying? They put guns in our community. You take away our stores. You put liquor stores. You put the... You, you all know this field. Yeah. You put fast food restaurants. And it's more jail time. Because, yeah, because it's only 10%. Homicide is only 10% of the deaths in the city of Cleveland in the black community. The other 90% is health, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes. So that that comes from the way we eat eating. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's structure. Everything that we going through is put here on purpose. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I really feel. But um, it affects my music because I speak a lot against it. Mm. And it can become um, discouraging when you don't see a change. Don't see nothing. You know what I'm saying? So you'd be like, damn, should I continue this push? Mm. But I'd be lying to say I never thought about quitting, but it's just that I know that I'm this voice for the ones who don't have a voice. You know what I'm saying? There's some people who feel like me, really inside. But this shit ain't trending, and you don't get a lot of likes or followers for being conscious minded, so they don't say it. So, I so speak you gotta them. say it in a different way. So That's I, why I, I, yeah, but there's so many people that saying it in a different way. Like you know, look, Dirk and all them, like they the voice. He called himself the voice, yeah. and he dope, he right? Dope. He say it. So I ain't lie. he's speaking it in that way. But I'm 33 years old, so I gotta give it to you in a mentor form. I ain't trying to be your friend no more. Right. I'm at this point where I'm trying to be your mentor. If you don't get it right, it's it's, it's up to me to drill it to you. You feel me? And if you don't take it, you don't take it. But it's my job to do that as a mentor, you feel me? So that's where I'm at with it, man. And just being that mentor. I'm more of a big homie now than trying to be a rapper, you feel me? Yeah. I ain't into that. I got youth programs that I do. I teach young kids how to get their ass cap, their BMI, how to get paid for their music. Yeah. That's what I do, you feel me? So that's my goal, man, you know what I'm saying? So okay, then. Gotta give it to you that way. Okay, then. Got to. I appreciate you for this, too. This means something. Definitely do, man. I read this four times in my head, two times out loud. I don't know. What it's saying, but it's because of the lead that they not really pushing out here. They saying, oh, it's lead poison out here. It's so many lead poison kids that yeah. we don't know because they're not testing us for it yeah. because they don't care. Man, I believe they, it's war, they want us to not, oh, be functional. They want us to be dumb and black. But we really ain't got to be that. We're going to be who we really is. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't mess us up so bad. So it's okay to give a social security check out. Yeah. It's okay to say that the kid can't read. Oh, she or he can't do this, do that. But it's not okay because now you letting everybody know it's okay to fail. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to be dumb. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's okay yeah. to not know. It's not okay because we're supposed to know. Because if we done to this, we done to 30,000 other things. If we done to one thing, it's something behind that, behind that. So it's something behind everything that's been happening. But we not getting the full, I'm going to say, help because they not seeking oh that's nothing we need them to be like that we need them not to know we need them to be crazy you know what i'm saying people think they crack babies it ain't even about the crack you know what i'm saying it ain't even about the drugs it's about what's going on in them houses that they building and they putting families in and it's six it's six siblings and two of them mentally retarded you know what i'm saying but people don't pay attention to why oh they think it's the mama the mama could have been in hell in it during pregnancy. Yeah. We yeah. not knowing she living in the attic. Yeah. You putting the pregnant woman in the attic, the pregnant woman in the basement, pregnant woman in the back room that really got paint, uh, messed up window seals. That's all a part of lead poisoning, but they not bringing it out. And they don't test you for lead They don't. Infant. Like they went to you like one or three. By that time, it already hit you. It already hit you. Know, you. This guy so they not going to tell you because they don't want you to know and get you too worried. They not going to tell the parent. I want the parent to get too worried. Yeah. They going to let them be unknowingly of what's going on. When really we supposed to know. Yeah. A lot of people is messed up right now due to that. Yeah. A lot of people messed up due to trauma, seeing what's going on in the households. We need to just get that together and like stick to stick to stick to unity, like you say. You know what I'm saying? Stick to closure. People don't get closure, they drive them crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's with friends, family, a relationship, they drive them crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of kids don't get closure from their parents or why this happened before they die. Kids growing up, 10 year old, dead parents. Now you really just going to auntie love, cousin. It ain't nothing like a mama and a daddy love. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing like feeling that warmth when it's not okay you go there to mama. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing feeling like that. So everybody's saying, oh, my grandparents raised me. But that's not your mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's bad out here. Yeah. A lot of parents not meeting their 
moms and their mom not helping them, so it's like it make that's what's really going on though. Yeah. Feel me? So yeah, so again, man, like we said, when we talking about lead poison and lead paint, like I said, lead is a heavy metal that's inside of paint that causes brain damage. And that and there is this study that says sixty for six. Sixty six percent of the Cleveland adults cannot read. 95% of the adults in the Cleveland area cannot read, and it's due to lead paint inside the homes that cause brain damage. And this is what's really going on. And then you talk about infant mortality. Those are kids dying before the age of one. That's a big percentage as well because they come from poor dieting and stressful environments. And when you say poor dieting, we don't have a grocery store. We got fast food restaurants and gas stations that are selling food with high salt and everything that's in it. And it's killing us. It's really killing us. So when I say structure, that's what I mean from lead poison to the way we eat. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Like, that's all we got left? A little bit left. I want Brittany to just talk about what she got coming up and that's it. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I just dropped something called Chances. Uh, it's on YouTube. I'm about to put it on all platforms. I just dropped something called Struggle. Letting them know what's going on. Uh, Project Baby. I got something that I feel like I'm trying to give a message to the community. Not even just the black, the white, you know what I'm saying? The mix, the Hispanics, the entire, whatever. They want to listen to me. But somebody come from something, you know what I'm saying? And it kind of affected them. So I feel like the new songs I just dropped, it give more of uh, my background of what I went through, you know what I'm saying? And what I've been going through as of today, as of yesterday, just in life. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't hard, you know what I'm saying? But you got to make the best of what you got. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically what I got coming up, though. Appreciate you for that again, you know what I'm saying, for looking out and letting the world know what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. You got any last words you want to say? Um, I mean, pretty much, that was it right there. Mm -hmm. Other than uh, my uh, feature with her on my own coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Um, yeah, that's a wrap. We, let's take a few pictures and then we good.